Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Now, pay attention. I want to show you a mystery. I want to show you how altars work. Ah, may God give us understanding. Let me tell you. You see this, our fathers of faith? The level of results they are commanding? Believe me, if you think it is just based on intellect, think again you see this our nation and africa the kind of trouble we are in if you think it's just a political trouble think again do you not see the consistency of the operations regardless what government comes it is an altar my dear people more than just who is there or who is not there do you not see what happens to people during election it's as if something just comes on people and nobody knows what he's doing until after everything, everybody starts complaining. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. How does altars work? How does an altar work? Please write this down. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. And I want to reveal it to you now. All satanic altars, systems of authorization, systems of communication, right? They are powered by one major access point or one major altar. Now, forgive me to make reference to my dear film, Lord of the Rings, remember that our movie? Now, remember, if you've not watched it, I don't know what to tell you, but you just follow. God will grant you understanding. Remember, uh, I, I hope I understand the film really very well, but I know that there were many rings that were given to kings, and then there was one ring. Is that true? That powers the remaining other rings. This is what I'm trying to teach you. That all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar that means no matter what you do to all other altars if this one altar still remain you wasted your time now this is the mistake that most people have that they just keep rebuking things individually poverty this one that one all satanic altars are powered by one major altar pay attention now is called the altar of sin and iniquity write it down please judges chapter 6 and verse 1 the altar of sin and iniquity this is the altar that powers every other satanic altar and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hands of midian seven years what was the cause of the problem evil in the sight of the lord the altar of sin and iniquity and hold on before you assume any self-righteousness i want to tell you there are different levels of sin there is your personal sin when it has to do with altars there are territorial sins and there are sins that come from bloodlines so don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me the the altar of sin and iniquity. Hosea chapter 7 and verse 1. I found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully. Look up please. Let me, let, me, let me read it for you. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. I was about to come and heal them, but there was something that was discovered. When I would have healed Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. Romans chapter 5, from verse 12 to 14. Romans chapter 5. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. 
are we together now look how serious this issue of death is and yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in he says so then death passed upon all men for all have sinned we're reading to 14 13 now for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law 14 now this scripture blessed me so much nevertheless he said death reigned it didn't just come it now came and even reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression do you know what this means this is he's talking about us now the effect of that original seed it came and reigned even after them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the figure of him who is to come the altar of sin and iniquity john chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2 john chapter 9 the bible says and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now hear what the disciples said verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin are you seeing the disciples they went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause remember these guys had been under the mentorship of jesus this man's condition there must be something that has authorized satan he said who seen this man or his parents there was something they had known about the teaching of jesus some versions will say who seen him or his father because the word father means source so is it him or his background both of them can create an effect in his life who sinned i wrote down here just for your quick learning three levels of sin with respect with respect to the activity of altars three levels of sin number one personal sin personal sin first john chapter 1 and verse 8 personal sin three levels of sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us period the bible states it very clearly unmistakable there number two territorial sin territorial sin that means your personal sin you can repent before god but there is territorial sin a territory can sin against god an example sodom and gomorrah genesis 18 from verse 21 sodom and gomorrah was not just a personal sin he appears to abraham we are reading to 22 to, to 23 i will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crowd in fact let's start from 20. let's start from 20. he says the lord said because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin as a territory is very grievous uh-huh i will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come to me if not i will know verse 22 it says and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abraham stood yet with the lord one last verse and abraham drew, drew near and said will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked that means in that city they were righteous and wicked people the righteous man being lot yet as far as god was concerned as a territory they were sinners statistics show sadly that nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations are you corrupt but it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear nationally speaking is that true no matter how righteous you are the whatever 
lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a Nigerian passport, we all corporately, no matter how individually righteous we are, you have to face that backlash until as a territory we are changed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Sodom and Gomorrah, a territory can sin. Another example, Jonah chapter 1, Nineveh. Nineveh, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 3. And then we'll go to chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. Jonah chapter 1 and verse, Jonah chapter 1 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, we're reading to verse 3, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against, cry against what? The city, cry against the city, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3. Uh, you know what happened to Jonah? Jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience. And you know that Jonah was angry because he said, Lord, I know these people. You are right. If I talk to them now and they repent, that means a territory can repent of their sins. Are we together? Chapter 3 and verse 1. Now Jonah came out of the belly of the fish. Verse 1 now. 3 verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee that means what I told you go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity and if you don't do anything about it judgment is coming what happened verse 3 so Jonah arose and went on to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord it says now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we're going to be reading what happened because as soon as Jonah announced that the Bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if I stole money and I bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we're all sinners so the animals fasted. It's in your Bible. Praise the Lord. So there's territorial sin. The last level of sin is sin based on foundations and bloodlines. Please write it down. Don't worry. Don't be afraid of hearing all these words. I know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time. You just trust me. I'm a good pilot sin based on foundations and bloodlines don't forget these three levels of sin personal sin territorial sin and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline psalms 11 and verse 3 it says if the foundation be destroyed what can the not what can men do even the righteous will be affected Exodus chapter 34 from verse 6. Exodus 34 and verse 6. Watch this now. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Next verse. Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty he says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh he says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worship next verse he says, Moses, now, if I have found grace, we are reading to 14, in your sight, O Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity. Are you seeing Moses repenting and asking the Lord? He said, this one is not just for myself. I, I agree with what, with what you have said. Verse 10. He says, Okay, let's go to verse 9. Watch this. Moses is pleading now on behalf of his people. 
he says and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance how did god respond to that issue verse 10 please and he said behold i make a covenant before all thy people i will do marvels such as have not seen done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the lord for it is a terrible thing that i will do with thee reading to 14 verse 11 now quickly observe thou that observe thou that which i command thee this day behold i will drive out before thee the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hivites the jebusites uh-huh take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest let it be for a snare in the midst of thee verse 13 but ye shall destroy their is that in your bible i want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars break their images and cut down their groves last verse for thou shalt worship no other god for the lord whose name is jealous wow I only used to read that he's a jealous God and he's saying the Lord whose name not negative satanic jealousy let's not confuse what is written here jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about God when he sees that spiritual halotry from God to God and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement i've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance that even the sin of man god did not cast it out of man as powerful as god is he didn't cast sin out of man the lamb had to come and die lived 33 years died to purchase redemption for us is someone following now just like demonic altars all godly altars are powered by one major altar too have i lost you all godly altars are powered by one major altar that means if you see any platform that has been available to men to encounter god to authorize activities of the realm of the spirit there is one major altar that powers them all the bible calls it the throne of grace the throne of grace alongside the blood of jesus that is called the eternal covenant that is the principal altar that powers everything good in the life of the believer please do not forget this every system of authorization every system of exchange every system that allows for interaction with the angelic with the holy spirit every system that commands spiritual virtues to come upon the saints is powered by this one altar the throne of grace Hebrews chapter 4 please from verse 4 to 16 if you're following please say amen. amen 14 I meant to say Hebrews 4 14 14 to 16 Hebrews 4 14 it says seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the son of God he said let us hold fast our profession 15 now for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity 
but was in all points tempted like us yet without sin 16 let us therefore come boldly unto that throne of grace he says we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need someone shout hallelujah, hallelujah. hebrews chapter 12 please from verse 22 to 24 please write these scriptures down but ye are come to mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels next verse to the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect 24 now it says unto jesus hallelujah the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood that he used you see that now the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel you read what paul was teaching that jesus carried his own blood as the high priest and poured it upon that altar once and for all if you ever see any any believer in christ walking consistently in favor walking consistently in grace walking consistently in victory having divine encounters those are different altars and platforms that make for that possibility but the one altar that powers it all is the throne of grace that throne you see god sitting on is an altar who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can no one will oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh. God can you imagine that he sits on an altar an altar that ensures that what he says if you believe it and you access it and you see every other person who has tried to put together an altar will eventually die but there is he that liveth and abideth The throne of grace is an altar it is the throne of grace that powers that altar of prayer the altar of favor every platform that allows you to receive of any spiritual blessing is powered by this one altar the same way every demonic occurrence around families territories and nations is powered principally by the altar of sin and iniquity is someone learning already hebrews chapter 13 20 and 21 hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant 21 the same way that blood even made a way for jesus christ to return from the dead it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will that means whatever needs to make you go forward there is an altar that insists that the provision is there for you this is very powerful every time you come to jesus and hand over your life to him more than just receiving of his life you subscribe to the covenant of that altar are we together yes so it does not matter 
what altars it does not matter what demonic things it does not matter whether my grandfather or great-grandfather whether my region worship idols it does not matter what it is one thing is that the moment you become connected to that one altar that throne of grace through the blood of the eternal covenant how to raise and maintain altars you don't have to cry cuz i have paid the price i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood the blood the blood I plead the blood, I plead the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry, for you have paid the price. One more time. Here I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. The blood, the blood, eternal saving love. I don't have to cry, for you have paid the price. One minute recap on everything we have said. We said how that an altar is a system of authorization. An altar is a platform that allows the realm of the spirit to interact with the physical realm. And that an altar also allows for laws and spirits to find expression. And that, that an altar is what empowers and activates covenants and keeps them alive. Hallelujah. We did say how that the major assignment of altars is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or demonic and we agreed that you can test the presence of altars in a life a family a business a region through the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether they be negative or positive we discuss how altars work that all demonic altars are powered by one major system of authorization the altar of sin and iniquity and that all godly manifestations you call them altars systems platforms that allow for the victory of the saints they are empowered by this one altar called the throne of grace alongside the blood of the eternal covenant now how to raise and how to maintain altars this also doubles to teach you how to tear down altars every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high every high thing must come down you wear the victor's crown you overcome one more time. Every high Every thing, thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen, some of you, by reason of this teaching and the prayers that will follow shortly, you will rewrite the narratives of your families. Believe me when I tell you this: that what they said has not been done. It is with gallancy and victory you will do it. That nobody in your family can rise. And you have seen it happen. Now with this knowledge, you will hold it like a key. And clear those altars to give you room. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. 
Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Can I tell you the truth? Every man you see who has become a champion found a way to put those altars down. Everybody, pastor, listen, this may be the key you've been looking for. Why is it that ministry does not work? When the altars go down, the result will speak. You will see it and you will know that victory has come. Please pray in the spirit in one minute before I teach you how to raise altars. Those watching, make sure you are praying. Connect from your homes. Connect from any region. Behold, I show you a mystery. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire. Let your mind be. Holy God's fire.